As we all know, Apple September event is happening this Tuesday, and even though John Prosser already leaked the design of the iPhone 14, we're still all excited for the iPhone 13 because it'll be packing some long-awaited features like a 120Hz display panel, a smaller notch, portrait mode video recording, potentially an always-on display, and of course, the new A15 Bionic chip. And luckily, we've recently been getting some huge leak bombs in terms of the A15 chip's performance and how it compares to the current A14 chip and the next-gen chips over on the Android side, like the unreleased Equinox 2200 from Samsung and the Snapdragon 898 from Qualcomm. So for this video, I did a bunch of leak research and number crunching to come up with the performance numbers for each of those three flagship chips so that you guys will know exactly what to expect from the iPhone 13 as well as the best Android phones on the market next year. Now before I get into which chip will be going into which flagship device, I want to first show off our new Apple product icon shirt which you can find down in the merch shelf below this video if you want to help support this channel. According to a new leak out of Taiwan on Klian.net, the new Equinox 2200 chip will be used in the European and South American Galaxy S22 Ultra models when it's announced next year at Samsung's Unpacked event. And as for the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 898, that chip will be going into the North American, Southeast Asian, and Indian Galaxy S22 Ultra models. And of course, the A15 will be going into every single iPhone 13 model out there, even the lower end ones. So to start off with the leaks, let's jump right into the leaked graphics performance of the A15 Bionic chip. According to that leaker on Klian.net, the A15 sample from July was able to score 198 FPS in the GFX Bench Manhattan 3.1 benchmark. And just to give you some context on just how good that is, I ran that same test on my iPhone 12 Pro Max and it scored 140 FPS. So what this basically means is that the A15 chip's GPU is around 41% faster than the one in the A14, and that's because Apple is adding an extra GPU core to make it a five core GPU compared to the A14's four core. However, the biggest issue with the leaked performance of the A15 is that it suffers from severe thermal throttling. The leaker claims that after the third and following Manhattan benchmark runs, they scored a much lower 140 to 150 FPS because of overheating or thermal throttling. That basically means that we're seeing around 24 to 29 percent thermal throttling off the top of the maximum score. So what I did is I ran the same test three times back to back on my iPhone 12 Pro Max to test the throttling and here are the results that I came up with. The A14 chip throttles down to around 119 FPS from the peak score of 140 compared to the A15 chip throttling down to 140 to 150 from 198. So the good news here is that even under maximum throttling, the A15 is still faster than the peak score of the A14. With that said, I also ran the same benchmark test on our Galaxy S21 Ultra, and we got a peak score of 116 FPS with a very minimal dip to 108 on the third back-to-back -back run which shows that it barely has any throttling at all compared to both of the iPhone chips. However, the A14 chip is still faster while throttling, and the A15 obviously blows it away. And now, with that said, let's finally start looking at the leaked benchmark scores from the Equinox 2200 and the Snapdragon 898. According to Tron on Twitter, it was able to score between a maximum of 170.7 and 181.8 FPS in the Manhattan 3.1 test. So it basically beats out the A14 chip, but it's still well behind the A15. And as far as the throttling, he claimed that it scored 127.5 FPS after the third run, so that points to around 25 to 30% thermal throttling, which is very similar to how much the A15 chip throttles. And the leaker on Klian.net also confirmed that the Equinox 2200 suffers from severe throttling due to the TDP limit. Now moving on to the new Snapdragon 898 chip, the leak 
Elite Peak Performance in Manhattan 3.1 is 158.4 FPS, which is quite a bit lower than the other two chips, which is definitely disappointing for all of us here in the United States because this is the chip that's going into the US version of the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the third run data for the Snapdragon 898, but the leaker on clan.net did mention that it has less throttling compared to the 815 and the Equinus 2200. So I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and put the throttling at around 15 to 20% instead of 25 to 30% on the other two chips. And if we calculate it that way, it puts the third run performance at around 127 to 135 FPS, which is lower than both the A15 and the Equinox, and that has been confirmed to be the case by another leaker named The Galox on Twitter, showing that the Snapdragon is the slowest chip. So with all that said, we can see that the A15 chip is still in the top spot in terms of peak graphics performance, as well as the throttle down performance. But I'm pleasantly surprised that the Android side is starting to catch up, which is good news for everybody. Now with the graphics side out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the CPU performance side. According to a Hong Kong media company that I can't pronounce, the A15 chip is gonna be built on TSMC's improved five nanometer technology. But the big change is that the A15 is expected to be based on ARM's brand new ARM V9 architecture, so it's gonna support SVE2 extension technology, and it's gonna have other benefits. But as far as the performance, they're expecting a 20% improvement on the CPU side. So if we add 20% to the single core performance that we got with the A14 chip, the A15 should score around 1900 points, which is very impressive because it's faster than the current M1 chip. And if we apply that same 20% improvement to the multi-core side as well, we're left with over 5,000 multi-core points, which is absolutely insane for an iPhone. Now, as for the Android chips, it's a bit more tough to track down the performance gains for the CPU, but we did find some new leaks. According to the user Digital Chat Station on Weibo, the Snapdragon 898 should also provide a 20% performance boost over the current 888 but at the expense of increased temperatures. Now, since he's talking about high thermals, we can assume he's talking about the multi-core performance, which we're gonna save for a little bit later. Now, calculating the single core performance should be very easy because the layout of the 898 chip has already been leaked, and the main performance core will be using Qualcomm's new X2 Prime core, along with a bunch of lower powered cores. According to ARM themselves, this X2 core is 16% faster than the previous X1 core. So if we go by that calculation, the Snapdragon 898 should get a single core score of around 1308 compared to 1128 on the Snapdragon 888. Now, as far as the Equinox 2200, apparently it could be coming with the exact same X2 core, which would basically give it identical single core performance to the Snapdragon. And if this is true, Apple's A15 is gonna absolutely obliterate both of them in the single core department, being over 46% faster. And as far as the multi-core side for the Equinos, a leak from my drivers claims that it's gonna be using a similar layout to the chipset on the Snapdragon 898. So it should also have a similar multi-core performance number. And as we can see, the A15 chip continues to blow them both out of the water. So with all that said, it's pretty obvious that Apple's A15 will continue to dominate the competition, even though it's gonna be releasing next week, compared to those chips coming out months later. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. And if you did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Definitely check out our merch down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.